Hello and welcome to another exclusive first look unboxing at Big Chief's 13th Doctor 6th scale signature edition figure. Once again, a massive thank you to Big Chief Studios for kindly sending me this figure ahead of its release in order to film this unboxing. And let's dive straight in. So the figure comes packaged in the standard brown shipper box, which I've already scored open. So if we just slide this out. So again, we've got the black plastic corner protectors, which are very helpful. Let's get those out of the way. And then wrapped in bubble wrap. So if we move that out of the way, and if we remove the bubble wrap sleeve. There we have it, the 13th Doctor 6th scale character replica figure signature edition collector series. So you can just about make out that we've got the uh, current version of the TARDIS. This whole box has a metallic foil finish, uh, which you can probably just see, there we go, reflecting on the lights like that. And then, much like with the other figures, you've got the uh, Gallifreyan text, the trim around the sides, which looks very nice. On the back, it's quite hard to photograph, but you've got the, the figure of Jodie and uh, the little character biography at the bottom. On the top, it's the Doctor Who logo. And then on the bottom here, you have all of the, uh, the legal gubbins and then your little section saying which number edition out of 500 this is. And of course, because this is a production sample and it doesn't have a number, your versions will. Let's crack this open and take a look. So I'll slide off the top. Again, it's the same shoebox style packaging as with the third Doctor and the eighth Doctor. So we've got the exterior of the TARDIS at the front. On the side, we have the credits, everyone involved with the figure. On the side here, we have the specifications, so costume stuff and accessories, etc. And then on the top, we have the Doctor Who logo, the Who, uh, and that's the same as well on the, on the bottom. So if we take this out, this slip, quite tight. As you can see, it's the full police box. Well, most of it anyway, almost the whole three sides. I guess if you have it like that, tucked in nicely, you can use that as a, an exterior backdrop, should you wish. But of course, on the other side, we just move the figure out of the way, we have the interior, and that is the backdrop for your figure. And it looks great. So let's move that out of the way and bring Jody back into the shot. So we've got here um, the figure, you've got your hands and your other accessories, and we'll go through those in a sec. But like always, the set is on two trays. So you have your figure and accessories on the first tray. And then beneath that, you have your display stand and your additional top, which is the blue one. And then also inside the box, this is floating around few things in here. Now, like I said earlier, this is a signature edition figure, but as you can see, there's no signature plaque with this figure because it's a sample. Obviously, for those of you who have ordered it, you will get your signature with it. So we have uh, the certificate of authenticity. Again, like with the Pertwee one, it's just a recreation of the front of the box. And then on the inside, there's a bit of the inside of the TARDIS with uh, a picture of Jodie. All the same sort of information and again this is where it would say which edition number this is out of 500 but like i said this is a sample so it isn't numbered we have our instructions on how to change the batteries in the stand and then we have two additional things we have uh, this little piece of card which is the help me note from uh, kablam and then we have a kablam box flat packed of course and this has, uh, on some of the tabs, double-sided sticky tape. So you have to peel that off and fold it up. So we'll do that presently. But for now, let's go back to the figure and see what we've got. So, be careful not to, to tip it up too much. Oh yeah, everything's fallen out. <laughs> so we've got our sonic screwdrivers down here. 
got the orange one and uh, the blue one, which I will go into a bit later. We've got the psychic paper, additional hands for holding the different accessories. We have our pating in here, which we'll take a look at in a bit. We have our fez and we also have our alternate head, which is the more neutral sort of solemn looking head um, compared to the smiley one that we've got here. So if we just take her out and take the plastic off her face and just like with Third Doctor, she stands up incredibly well on her own. She uh, doesn't require a display stand. She's uh, She stands up very well. I'm going to go and uh, just sort out the costume a little bit because obviously she's uh, a bit dishevelled from being stuck in the box. And then uh, we'll go through the rest of the figure. OK, so here she is after I've just sort of fiddled around with sorting the costume out a little bit. She's got a wire in her coat so you can pose it to make it look, you know, windswept like that. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to keep it in a uh, more neutral pose just for the, the sake of this. But uh, that works well, as you can see. Uh, you can get some good poses out of it there. Uh, the inside of the coat, you've got this blue lining. Already you can see the rainbow print on the outside. Uh, what I did to just try and tidy her up a bit, other than fiddling around with the coat, was I pretty much took most of the costume off. I loosened the trousers and took off the, um, the braces, just so I could... Uh, lift up the pink top a little bit and um, and pull down the white under top because a lot of that white shirt was showing and she doesn't really wear it like that in the in the program. So this is the head that she comes packaged with already, the sort of gently smiling face. As you can see, they've got some really good flesh tones going on there. Very realistic. You've got the glossy look to the eyes, again, to make them look realistic. You've got the earrings sculpted in, painted in silvers and golds. And then her hair has a lot of different washes going on. It's blonde, but it's got the dark bits at the roots, which looks very good. This portion here, uh, the neck portion, this is actually all quite squishy, as you can see. This is uh, all rubber and everything from from the neck down is uh, is like a, a rubber covering over the figure. So the neck, the breasts, the um, stomach part, all of that is uh, like a soft rubber. And then on the outside, she's got her pockets, just the flaps here. Um, these don't work, they're just false pockets. Um, but her trousers do, they have pockets uh, that you can just see in here. And you could, you know, pose her with her hands in her pockets if you wished. And of course on the back, She's got her hood, and yes, you can obviously put that up over the top. Not that we ever really see her do that in the series. It was on one of the promo pictures, and I think she did it in one episode when it was raining. But um, otherwise, yeah, the, the hood never really stays up. Uh, and of course, we've got down here, uh, we've got the boots. These have been sculpted with the large laces and the realistic texturing. You can see she's got her socks on underneath. These are removable, so if you pull the shoe off, you could slide the socks off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the coat off so you can get a better look at um, what's going on underneath the coat uh, and just show you a little bit of the detail inside the coat, actually. Um, one thing which is really handy with this is a lot of the times with these sorts of figures, if you're taking the coat off, you have to remove um, the hands. But because this coat has been designed with these slits at the cuffs, you don't have to do that. Something that's really cool is you've got the pink or the lilac inside the sleeves of the arms, which is just like on the actual costume. And I believe that's the colour of the suffragettes or something like that, if I remember rightly. Uh, that was a little uh, Easter egg that the costume designer put in the real coat. Uh, so that's really good. And this is, again, a very lightweight fabric, so it falls very well. It's not too heavy. Without the coat on, we can now see a bit more of the costume. So you've got the, um, I believe they're called petrol coloured, the uh, the trousers. And it's kind of like the same sort of finish that we've got on the packaging for the box. It's that sort of metallic blue, which works really well. And then, of course, you've got her braces. You've got sort of like a leather strap portion around here. And then you've got some elasticated parts here and then the main yellow braces. So what I'm going to do now is replace the head and also change the top to the blue one. And I'll show you how we go about that. So we'll take the head off first. Now, what I've noticed with my one is the head comes off from the, uh, the attachment here and we will slide down the braces. Now, what I will say about this, actually, before we do that, loosen the trousers. 
So that's just Velcro that comes away like that. And we'll very gently, now this sort of ribbon material is quite taut. It's um, it almost feels like papery is or plasticky. It's quite quite strange, but um, it's very it feels very delicate. So that is one thing that I will uh, I will say is be very careful when you're taking the trousers, or not even taking the trousers off, taking the shirt off. Okay, so let's now try and take her top off. So I might have to um, I might have to cut the video and do this off camera. Okay, so we've got the top on. That was um, tricky, tricky work, uh, because when you were trying to put the top on, the sleeves were getting bunched underneath everything and going further and further down the arm. So I had to use a pair of tweezers to hold that into place, hold the sleeves in while I put the shirt on. So tricky, but um, once it's on, uh, it looks great. Braces back on, trousers fastened. Great. So that looks perfect. So now let's uh, bring in the other head, which too is also uh, covered in plastic. So this is the original neutral head that was shown. So as you can see in there, there is actually this little piece here uh, isn't supposed to come off, which is unusual because normally these bits stay stuck in the head, but not in this case. You just swap it like that. In terms of articulation, she has all of the articulation that you would expect of a figure of this scale. You know, she can basically move like an actual human being. Again, much like with the third Doctor figure, the joints aren't loose, they're stiff enough that everything feels secure and able to stay in place when you're posing her. So again, like with the third Doctor figure, there was no spare pegs and these don't seem to come out at the wrists. They seem very, very stiff and I am beginning to wonder if maybe they don't, maybe they're stuck in and it only moves away at the hand itself. And there we go, that is the alternate head. That's how you do it. So it's a bit of a process to um, swap the top. You know, if you're gonna do it, ideally you're gonna need a pair of tweezers, but uh, overall it works very well and the finished look uh, is great. Obviously, like I said, this is the sort of more traditional look, this blue top, so um, it works very well. Now, this different head, like I said, it's a neutral head. Again, paint apps and everything are exactly the same, but you do have some slight differences with the hair. The hair on the other one is a bit more tucked into the face. I think more how she wears it in the series. This one, I think, is probably based more on that original promo image. So it's got like little strands falling down in different areas and stuff, and it works well, especially if you're after a bit more of a, a solemn look to your 13th Doctor. In terms of accessories, she of course comes with all of the various interchangeable hands which are all designed to hold the different accessories that she comes with. Each of the hands have been painted with realistic skin tones and look incredibly lifelike. She has two sonic screwdrivers. It's the same sculpt, but one is in orange with the orange crystal and one is in blue, blue crystal. Now I can't actually remember it glowing blue in the series, but then again, I am more of a classic person when it comes to all the finer details. They've both been cast in the corresponding coloured translucent plastic, so orange and blue. And then you've got the silver paint over the top with a dirty wash, which gives it a very realistic look and is very accurate to what we see on screen. She also comes with a psychic paper, which we've seen with previous Big Chief figures. Again, for something quite simple, there's some nice detail in there. It has a leather texture to it. It also has the text sculpted into the back, so you can see where it says UK. She also comes with a fez, which we see in Kablam. This is fairly simple with a piece of thread knotted through the top. And although it's not designed to fit on the doctor's head, you can sort of balance it there and with her hand hold it in place and it makes for a fun accessory. And then we also have a monster in the pack, which is the Pating. This is a great sculpt, very fun. Obviously it is just a solid piece. There's no articulation or anything. Very realistic skin tones. It's sort of speckled in places and lighter on the stomach and around the face and pink around the lips and around the edges of the eyes, and the black and the blue in the eyeballs, and the nails have been painted a lighter brown with a dark wash as you move further in towards the fingers and toes. A really fun accessory to pose with your 13th Doctor. So like I said at the start, we also have two additional accessories. We have the uh, order slip from Kablam with uh, Help Me written on the back. And then we have our Kablam box to put our fez in. So on the tabs, or some of the tabs, you have a, a bit of sticky back plastic 
So if we go like this and try and put it together, uh, I think most of the folds are already built in. So the top doesn't stick. I guess that's so you can put your fez inside. There we go. Fold that tab down and do the same on the other side. There we go. Take that one off and fold it down. Uh, it feels very sticky, so I imagine that once you've done it, you want to make sure you do it right the first time. Like that, and there we go. Kablam! And uh, I think for these top ones, you want to fold it in a bit more like that. There we go. So otherwise they're going to be springing up all over the place. And then you have your Kablam box. So the print on this is really good. It is exactly what you see in the show. There is no Kablam man to come with it, unfortunately. But put your order slip in there. Like that. Get your fez. And there we go. Ready to be shipped to the TARDIS. And then we also have the light up display stand. So we take this out. Just like with previous Big Chief figures, it just snaps on at the back here, that part. And then if we switch on, there we go. Doctor Who in orange, very effective, I think. There we go, that is the 13th Doctor figure from Big Chief Studios. Lots going on here, lots of posability and display options with the multiple accessories, alternate costume pieces and the alternate heads. Once again, a massive thank you to Big Chief Studios for sending this over so I could film this video. If you haven't pre-ordered her already, you can still do so. And for those of you who have pre-ordered, I hope you enjoy the figure when it arrives very soon. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye.